goals. To be a great leader. So there's a saying, there's a problem. To be a great leader, one must be trustworthy. Yeah, so to be a great leader, one must be trustworthy. And in order to be trustworthy, one must be truthful. Yeah, so that's the saying, yeah, and that's the rule. So one must be trustworthy, which translates as Amin. One must be truthful, which translates as solid. Yeah, so in order to be a successful leader, now look at the Zat of Rasulullah The messenger of Allah was given the title of Al Amin and As Sadiq by the entire Arabia. That shows you the leadership and the greatness of Rasulullah. If you look at the life of the Messenger of Allah after announcing Prophethood, so the Prophet what age did the Messenger of Allah announce his Prophethood at? Anyone, is anyone gonna have a guess? Or anyone know? What age did the Prophet well, at the age of 40? One thing to understand here, very important. The Prophet doesn't become a prophet at the age of 40. Doesn't become a prophet. He was always a prophet. He announces his prophecy at the age of 40. Yeah, he announces. When instructed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he announces his prophethood at the age of 40. Before that, nobody knows that the Prophet is a prophet. Nobody knows that he's a messenger of Allah. Yet still, people love the Prophet Why? Because he was the trustworthy one, the truthful one, and had the best of character traits. Yeah, so what do we learn from this? We learn from this, first thing to learn from this is that we being Muslims, Alhamdulillah. We are Muslims, Alhamdulillah. Living in a non-Muslim country, we should be inviting people towards the religion by our character. Yeah, by following the beautiful teachings of Rasulullah Implementing that character into our lives. Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu Ummul Mu'mineen Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu anha. When she married the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what inspired her? Yeah, what inclined her to marry the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Imam Zulkani mentions in the Shah of al Bawahi, Imam Zulkani mentions and he says that Sayyidah Khadija, she said, Inni qad radibtu. Yeah, she said, what inclined me towards you? Yeah, what inclined me towards you? She says, oh messenger, it was your beautiful character. Oh messenger, it was the honor that you had amongst your people. Oh messenger, it was the truthfulness of your speech that inspired me to marry. Yeah, that's why Sayyidah Khadija married Rasulullah at the age of 40. And Sayyidah Khadija remember, was widowed. Yet she, her previous husbands had passed away. She never actually wanted to marry again. Many, many proposals of marriage would come to Sayyidah Khadija because she was known as at tahira the pure one. Yet the entire Makkah knew that she was the pure one. People would send marriage proposals for her because that's how much of an honorable lady she was. But when the Prophet Sallallahu went on a business trip on behalf of Sayyidah Khadija, and Sayyidah Khadija served Maisara, he spoke about the character of Rasulullah He said that we have performed business before, but the profit we have made with Muhammad وسلم, we have never made in the past. We have never made this sort of profit. And Sayyidah Khadija asked, what was the reason? Maisara says it was the character of Rasulullah it was the character. Sayyidina Qais, he was the business partner of Rasulullah He says that I performed business for many years with Rasulullah But I never saw the Messenger of Allah have a dispute or a disagreement with a fellow merchant. Never ever had a disagreement. Never ever had a difference of opinion. Whoever performed business with Rasulullah fell in love with Rasulullah So what does that teach us? The next lesson teaches us that you know when we perform business or anything with anyone, we should always be truthful. We should never take the haq of anyone. We should never take the right of anyone. The Prophet remember this is all before announcing prophethood. Yet this is all happening before announcing prophethood. People are falling in love with Rasulullah at the age of 40, when the Messenger of Allah 
then climbs Mount Safa, invites his close relatives towards the religion, then people turn against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah, people become the enemies of Rasulullah Alaihi Salatu Wasallam. Even then, even sworn enemies, bloodthirsty enemies, could not fault the beautiful character of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They could not fault the beautiful character of Rasulullah. They had no choice but to praise the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you can understand how much of a status the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam has. You know when an enemy praises you, then you know you must be something special. Look, if a loved one, you can understand by this. If a loved one praises someone he loves, so you have one person, he praises someone he loves, the other person can say, yeah, but he loves him anyway. He loves him anyway, so he has a biased opinion towards him. Yeah, that you can you can say that comment. If a neutral person, someone who's neutral, yeah, so someone, he's not going to gain any benefit by praising anyone. If a neutral person praises someone, you can say that he is a neutral individual. It doesn't make a difference to him whether he praises him or not. Yeah, someone can say that. But if an enemy praises someone, when an enemy has no choice but to praise that individual, that is when we say, no doubt, he must be something special. And even enemies did not have a choice but to praise Rasulullah Even enemies were forced to praise Rasulullah And whatever the Prophet would say, whatever the Messenger of Allah would say, people knew that in reality it was not a lie. Yeah, because the Prophet was known as Sadiq. He was known as the truthful one. The Prophet could never ever tell a lie, and there's a beautiful example of this. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu anhu. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu anhu says that I would write everything that I would hear from the Prophet. I would write everything that I would hear from the Prophet. So one day, the Quraysh said to me, Oh Abdullah, you write everything that the Prophet says, everything that your messenger says, you write it. Why do you write it? Rasulullah Bashar, this is what the Quraysh said, that the messenger of Allah is just a mere human. But in reality, we know that the Prophet is not like us. The messenger of Allah would say to the companions, I will go with thee. Who from amongst you is like me? Let's look at him and I am not like you. You cannot be like me. Yeah, so the Quraysh say, Rasulullah Bashar, the messenger of Allah is a mere human, so why do you write everything he says? Sometimes he speaks out of anger, and sometimes he speaks out of happiness. Now when a person speaks out of anger, <coughs> when someone is angry and he says something, later on he will regret it. And if someone, when he's overexcited, if he says something, Later on, he can regret it. That happens. So this is what they're trying to do. They're trying to brainwash Sayyidina Abdullah bin Amr radiallahu anh. So Sayyidina Abdullah bin Amr radiallahu anh says that I was quite upset by this. This really hurt me. When they were saying this about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it really hurt me. So he says, I went to the Prophet alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I would write everything that you say. I would always make notes of everything that you say. The Quraysh are saying to me that sometimes you speak out of anger, sometimes you speak out of happiness or messenger. So what do I do now, Ya Rasulullah? I have stopped writing. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ya Abdullah, uktub. Abdullah, you write and you keep writing. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then points his finger towards his blessed tongue. He says, Oh Abdullah, you write and you keep writing. For I swear by the one in whose control is my life. Nothing comes out of this tongue except that it is the haq, except that it is the truth. The Quran says, the Quran verifies this by saying, in huwa illa wa yuha. When the Messenger of Allah speaks, he does not speak from his own desire. Everything he says is a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks, only the truth comes out of the blessed mouth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is why the Imam said, Then I look to the Wahi Then he bought the Shahi Then I look to the 
بات یہ جزتا تیری بات شرح قرآ تیرا نام دل کی دستی تیرا ذکر لا دے جا تیری ذات سے محبت تیرے حکم کی اطاعت یہ زندگی کا مقصد یہی اصل دین و ایمان to the leaders at that time and invite them towards Islam. He would invite them towards Islam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wrote a letter to the Roman Emperor, Heraclius. Yeah, the Caesar at the time, the Roman Emperor, Heraclius. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wrote a letter to him inviting him towards Islam. When Heraclius receives this letter, he is in Jerusalem at the time. Heraclius is in Jerusalem at the time, he sees the letter and he knows that a convoy has come from Arabia to Syria. So he knows that a convoy has come from Mecca and come to Arabia at the time. So Heraclius says, bring that convoy to me. So that convoy is presented in the court of the Roman Emperor. So then he calls his interpreter and he says, ask these people. That man Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who claims to be a messenger, who is closest to him in relation? Yeah, who is closest to him in relation? Sayyiduna Abu Sufyan radiallahu anhu at this point who has not embraced Islam. Not embraced Islam at this point. He says, I am closest to him in relation. So he says, bring him forward. Yeah, so Sayyiduna Abu Sufyan is presented in the court of Heraclius. Then Heraclius says to his interpreter, he says, tell the people who have accompanied him, I am going to ask him some questions. When I ask him some questions, if he speaks the truth, then you remain silent. If he doesn't speak the truth, then you falsify. Then you tell me that he's not speaking the truth. Now he's going to ask about Rasulullah He says, first question. The first question he asks, this man who claims to be a prophet, does he come from a noble lineage? Does he come from a high lineage? And Abu Sufyan says, yes, he comes from a high lineage. Next question. And before him, has anyone claimed to be a prophet? Sayyidina Abu Sufyan says, no, no one's claimed to be a prophet. Then he says, and from his ancestors, were there any kings? Yeah, were there any kings from his forefathers? Sayyidina Abu Sufyan says, no, there was no kings. Then he asks the next question. And you know the number of his followers, are they increasing or are they decreasing? Sayyidina Abu Sufyan says, they're increasing. Next question. And when people enter into his religion, do they stay in the religion or do they leave the religion? Sayyidina Abu Sufyan says they stay in the religion, they don't leave the religion. Yeah, so he's asking him questions about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then he says, and this prophet, he claims to be a prophet. Is he known to tell a lie? Is he known to tell a lie? Sayyidina Abu Sufyan not embraced Islam yet. He says he's never told a lie. Yeah, he's not known to tell a lie, never. So then the next question is, and does he breach any contracts? Does he go against any contracts? Sayyidina Abu Sufyan says, he has never ever gone against his word. But we do have a contract now, the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. We do have a treaty. We don't know what's going to happen in the future, but up until now, he's never ever gone against his word. So the next question, and have you ever had a battle with him? Sayyidina Abu Sufyan says, yes, we've had a battle. And he says, what's the outcome? Sayyidina Abu Sufyan says, the outcome is sometimes they overpower us and sometimes we overpower them. That's the reason. Then Heraclius asks, what does he instruct you to do? What does he tell you to do? Sayyidina Abu Sufyan says, he tells us to worship one God, worship Allah. Do not associate a partner with him. Be good to your families. Be good to your relatives. Always remain pure, speak the truth. So he always tells us to do good. So when that conversation finishes, now listen to what the Roman Emperor says. 
about the prophets of Allah and the Roman Emperor says, I ask you, does he come from a high lineage? You said yes, and that is the case of prophets. Prophets always come from a high lineage. This is what the Roman Emperor is saying. I ask you, does he come from a noble lineage? You said